Now let's go deep into the eye and see our anterior chamber. What is the anterior chamber? It is the space present between posterior surface of cornea and anterior surface of iris. Okay. The space between the posterior surface of the cornea and anterior surface of the iris is called the anterior chamber. Now, the depth of the anterior chamber is 3 millimeters. This will be 3 millimeters and how did I measure this? This is the measurement from the center of the cornea to the center of the pupil. Center of cornea to center of pupil will give you the depth of anterior chamber and it is 3 millimeters. It is usually shallow in women, elderly and children. WEC, that is your mnemonic. These have shallow anterior chamber and young males have a deep anterior chamber. Okay. Now, the volume of anterior chamber is about 0.25 to 0.3 ml. The anterior chamber's volume is, please remember this, 0.25 to 0.3 ml. And it is filled with, we all know that it is the aqueous humor. Okay. The function of aqueous humor is to provide nutrition to the vascular structures of the eye, that is the cornea and the lens. So, it provides nutrition to cornea and lens that is the function of aqueous humor. However, the cornea is a bit more advanced regarding its nutrition. It derives only glucose from aqueous humor. The entire glucose supply comes from aqueous humor and the oxygen however is supplied by three sources. Number one is the air that is the atmospheric air to which it is in contact to when we keep our eyes open. Number two is our tear film and three is aqueous humor. From all these the oxygen is derived. Remember the glucose is from aqueous humor but oxygen is from the um, atmospheric air, the tear film and the aqueous humor. So you can imagine what happens when I wear a contact lens on my cornea. The oxygen supply is cut off from both the atmospheric oxygen as well as the tear film because the con cornea is not coming in contact with the tear film. So this leads to the corneal ulcers. Most commonly contact lens associated corneal ulcers are caused by pseudomonas. That is, this is a question for you and this is an ocular emergency. You need to treat it immediately otherwise the patient is going to become blind. So, one thing that you can suggest when you are prescribing contact lenses is that the patient should never wear it throughout the night. It, is, it will lead to dangerous outcomes. So, they, sh they should be advised to remove the contact lenses before sleeping. Okay, now let us go a bit deeper and look at this beautiful structure called the crystalline lens. No. Where is the crystalline lens located? Your answer will be the patellar fossa. Okay, the patellar fossa is the site of location of the crystalline lens. Okay, the lens is made up of 65% water and 35% proteins. So, majorly it is constituted by water. However, the 35% is made up of proteins, most of which we are calling the crystalline proteins. Okay. Now, this structure is the structure of the human lens. That is a crystalline lens. The center is called the nucleus and surrounding the nucleus is the cortex. Okay. The outermost structure of the lens is our capsule. Okay. This one you can see that it surrounds the cortex and you can also notice that the lens epithelial cells are only present anteriorly and they are absent posteriorly. So, the thinnest part is the posterior capsule. The thinnest part is the posterior capsule. This can be a question. Okay, the thinnest part of the lens capsule is the posterior part of the capsule. Okay, now how is this lens present in the um, patellar fossa. How does not it move away from its location? Because it is suspended by zonules or suspensory ligaments. So, you can see in this image that 
the ciliary body is forming certain ligaments which are attached to the lens and they are suspend they suspend the lens then this whole structure that is the iris ciliary body and the zonules together we call the iris lens diaphragm please remember the constituents of iris lens diaphragm these are the iris the ciliary body along with the zonules and the lens that's about the lens let's go into the posterior chamber now what is the posterior chamber it's the space between the posterior surface of the iris and anterior surface of the lens it's a very small chamber please mind me here it's not the posterior segment but i'm talking about the posterior chamber and it is the space between the posterior surface of the iris and lens okay and it also contains aqueous humor and anterior chamber and posterior chamber are connected to each other only via this opening that is our pupil okay the pupil connects the anterior and the posterior chamber so now let's go into the posterior segment of the eye that is the vitreous cavity what is the vitreous cavity it is the space present between the posterior surface of the lens and the retina it's present between the posterior surface of the lens and the retina this is called the vitreous cavity okay and its volume is about 4 ml remember we have discussed that the volume of the entire eyeball is 6 ml and in that only the vitreous cavity itself is occupying 4 ml of the volume it contains vitreous humor and it is the single largest structure inside the eye the vitreous entirely is a single structure gel like structure and it is the largest structure within the eye it has a strongest attachment is at the vitreous base this can be a question which is the strongest site of attachment of vitreous your answer will be the vitreous base hello everyone this is dr sai suguna your mentor for ophthalmology at medicoa now thanks for watching the video now we have put such videos all together in our ophthalmology app the trial version you can download from the link over here or in the description box below